Hi everyone, video two on mechanics vectors. Let's just briefly go through uh, which formulas we're using and where they come from. So we discussed about our CVAT equations and our CVAT equations always assumes constant something. So V equals U plus AT was our original CVAT equation. Velocity is a vector use the vector so that's initial velocity isn't it accelerations a vector t is a scalar so <clears throat> and that has constant initial velocity constant um, uh, acceleration doesn't it so sorry u and v doesn't really matter but this is constant acceleration here s equals ut plus half at squared again acceleration's constant uh, in this equation Right, which means if acceleration is constant, then velocity isn't constant. And just like here, velocity isn't going to be constant because acceleration is constant. It's constantly accelerating one way or another. Right, so that is useful. So this is constant acceleration, but not constant velocity because if there was constant velocity then there wouldn't be an acceleration right and same for here as well so the displacement isn't constant right and we've also got our f equals ma right so acceleration is constant again but that would make f change and remember force can be a magnitude applied in any direction and then finally we had r equals r naught plus vt and this is for constant velocity. So velocity must be constant, not acceleration. Acceleration, there must be no acceleration. The acceleration must equal zero, or if it's a vector, zero, zero, for us to use this formula. This is particularly helpful if we're doing problem solving then. And remember where this, what this formula means. This is your new one. So R, new position, yeah? R naught, old position, or initial position. V, constant velocity. And T is time. And just briefly, where did that come from? If there's an origin, if there's my ship, R, R naught, in order for, to get from O to R, I need to first go to the initial position, which is R naught. So R equals, so far I'm at R naught, that's brought me here. And then I'm traveling with velocity, so velocity, 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 until I end up here. So a certain number of velocities, and velocity is relative to time. So it could be two hours and a little bit for me to get there, or two minutes or a little bit to get there. It all depends on what speed we're talking about. <clears throat> um, so there we go. All right, how can we continue using this in our examples? Let's go for it. So it says, an ice skater is skating on a large flat ice rink. At time t equals zero, the skater is at a fixed point O, traveling with this velocity. So t equals zero, this sounds like initial velocity. So I've got ice skater, so let's call him skater one or something, right? It's always good to underline who you're talking about so you can match up their data. So the initial velocity is 2.4 minus 0.6. That's good. At time is 20. So at t is 20. Our final velocity is minus 5.6 and 3.4. So relative to O, the position ve skater has vector S. Um, you know, and that just means that's R, isn't it? Like S is displacement and displacement as it's relative to O Fine, call it S or R, doesn't matter to me. Um, <clears throat> it says, find the acceleration of the ice skater, just like before, we know U, we know, we know V, we know T, so that can help us find A. So it's all about selecting which equation we're looking at. So V minus 5.6, 3.4 equals, and U is 2.4 minus one point, uh, minus 0 0.6, sorry, let's try that again. So 2.4 minus 0 
uh, plus t, which was 20, and then we've got a. So we need to first subtract one vector from the other. So top to top, bottom to bottom, and then divide everything, top and bottom, by 20. So we should get minus 5.6, subtract 2.4, so minus 5.6, subtract 2.4, divided by 20. So that's minus 0.4. 3.4 minus minus 0.6 divided by 20, that's 0.2. So people often say, well, I don't really know how to work with the vectors. You need to subtract first and then divide, just like you do with trig. If you had like 3x plus 10, you'd move the 10 over first, then divide at the end. Right, so that's part A. Part B, find an expression for S in terms of T. Remember, S is position vector, so new position. This is new position isn't it, right? But this is for constant velocity. But this isn't constant because we have acceleration here. So that's why we're looking at this one here. That's why it's called S in terms of displacement because if we're talking about displacement relative to O, so because remember it's at started at this fixed point O, right? So if we have a coordinate system, it's starting here. So any displacement is already going to be relative to the origin, and that's going to give you a new position. So I know that it's the S equals 1 because this one has acceleration. If it didn't have acceleration, it must be this one, right? So part B, final. So we're talking S equals U, and U was 2.4 minus 0.6 times by T. And remember, it's a general t, because <clears throat> it says in terms of t, it's not at the 20 seconds, that's just had to be, um, that's just told us our final velocity at that time. But now we're talking generally, and a is minus 0 0.4 and 0 0.2, and we've got t squared. So that's one way of doing it, or you can just put it all together straight away. Um, so 2.4 t minus half lots of that, so that's 0.2t squared, and we've got minus 0.6t um, plus half of that, so that's 0.1t squared. You see, you can put it as one big vector, which is actually nicer to uh, work with, right? <coughs> Move on to the next so we can see it all a bit better. So we're in part C now. The time at which the skater is directly northeast of O. So let's talk about how we find things, and it's at, so at which it is directly northeast of O, not when it's traveling. So that's what I wanted to say earlier. Velocity as a vector always dictates the direction of travel. So if it ever says something's moving, find, the, find how it's moving, it's talking about velocity. Velocity is always direction of travel. But this isn't direction of travel, it's saying when are they there? When are they? northeast of O. So how do we deal with northeast? Well, what it's saying is, let's picture northeast. It started here. Northeast is uh, up here, right? And northeast, how do we describe northeast as a vector? Well, north, uh, well, east is one across and north is one up. So northeast is the same as one one, isn't it? That is northeast, one one, but so is 2-2, two, two, isn't it? 2-2 two, two is also northeast. It's just bigger. If I make that 2 and height 2, that's still northeast. So can you see that northeast isn't just 1-1? One, one. It's some multiple of 1-1 one, one because 0.5.5 point five, point five is still northeast. Minus 1. Uh, well, no, sorry, not minuses. Um, <clears throat> 3 and 3 is still northeast. Okay, so when you say, when you see something, when is it? directly northeast or northwest, it's always lambda, the one and one. So if it was south, if it was a uh, southwest, south is down, so you're minus one here, and west is left, so minus one here, so south uh, west would be lambda minus one minus one. Okay, so we knew from before that um, S equals this thing here, okay, so <clears throat> S equals 2.4 uh, T minus 0.2 T squared 
and minus 0 0.60 Oops. Uh, plus 0 0.1 t squared. So when is that thing parallel to this? That's what it's saying. So when it's parallel, we set it equal to. So we've got lambda 1, 1 must equal this thing here, 2.4 t minus 0 0.2 t squared minus 0 0.6 t plus 0 0.1 t squared. So that means top must equal top and bottom must equal bot bottom. But lambda on the outside isn't very helpful. Lambda times 1 is lambda. Lambda times 1 is lambda, top and bottom. So can you see you've got a simultaneous equation here? Because you've got lambda equals this thing, but also lambda equals this thing. So you can set them equal to each other. So therefore, 2.4t minus 0.2t squared must be the same as minus 0.6t plus 0.1t squared. And you can solve t for there. Right, if you move it all over and you uh, solve T. I think <coughs> we're running out of time, so I'm just going to move on to example four quickly. So at 2 p.m., the, the Coast Guard fit, uh, sitting a fixed observation point is with minus one three, right? So uh, they spot, spot a rowing dinghy 500 meters due south of this observation point. The dinghy has constant velocity this. Find in terms of the position vector of the dinghy t seconds after 2 p.m. So <clears throat> the Coast Guard is sitting in a position with minus 1, 3, yeah? So minus 1, 3, so it's like there. And it says um, spots of rowing dinghy 500 meters due south of that observation point. So if this is 3 up and minus 1 here, what's the initial position of the dinghy? So D can be dinghy. Remember what we said about listing that thing. It's talking about um, the dinghy has constant velocity. So we're here, right? So R0 is the dinghy's initial position when it's spotted. So 500 meters due south means it's still minus one, but it's all the way down here south of three. So 500 take 3 so that's 497 right uh, <clears throat> and it says as constant velocity 2 and 3 great so the position vector of the dinghy must be r not r naught plus vt so minus 1 497 plus 2t plus 3t so notice how i just made it one vector there quite quickly uh, b the distance of the dinghy from the observation point so how do you find distance um, at 2.05 p.m.? So we're talking meters per second, right? Constant velocity meters per second. So notice that unit, and this is five minutes. So five times 60, 300. T must be 300 in this case. So for part B, where is it <clears throat> after... 300 seconds, so you need to plug in 300 for t. So 497 plus 3 lots of 300. So this will tell you the position of where that dinghy is. So that's got to be 599. And 497 plus 3 lots of 300 must be 1397. So that's where it is, but it's asking what the distance from the dinghy and the observation point is, right? So to find distance between two vectors, you need to, so if this is R, this is the observation point, so you can call that P if you want, you need to find the vector P to R and then find its magnitude. So where is P? It said that this is a fixed position. So <clears throat> if this is the dinghy, RD, RP, right? is a fixed position, minus 1, 3. So therefore, uh, <coughs> RP to RD must be D minus P, mustn't it? Last thing, minus first thing. So minus 1, 3, subtract 599, nine, subtract 1397 equals uh, minus 600, and 
minus 1, 3, 9, 4. But if we want to find distance, we need to find the magnitude. So to find the magnitude, as you know, top thing squared plus bottom thing squared, square rooted. Okay, I think that's all we've got time for here.